we want to inspire, especially beginning of this year, especially for young people. Very, very vital indeed. The story of this man is a really inspiring one. Chris Sananu has had a really amazing journey. He's going to tell us all about that in just a second. Please welcome him to Better Living for the first time. There he is. Hello. Hi. Morning. How are you? Good morning. Fantastic. Good to How see you. you? Oh, sorry about that. Please have a seat. How are you doing? Very good. Excellent. Fantastic. It's good to have you on the show for the first time. I've actually wanted to interview you for a really long time. And I think, you know, when I called him and I told him, you know, Chris, we want to interview you on Thursday. And he said, Kobe, what's the theme? I said, we restore smiles on Thursday. Perfect person. <laughs> Perfect first guest because you're always smiling. Yes. How are you? <laughs> Fantastic. How is 2017 for you so far? I'm loving it. Yeah? I'm loving it. Right. Chris, your story, I think a lot of people have seen you in different platforms, on different print and on TV, but your story is a really interesting one. Um, as a young man, tell us, uh, from Ghana, how did your journey start? Well, this part of my life, I'll yeah. say this journey was, I, I arrived in Kenya in 92. My dad used to be a lecturer in um, Moore University, and um, I came for holiday. So sometimes I say I'm still on holiday, 24 years later, but um, I came to just spend some time with the family on my way to the U.S. for college. And it was so cold in Eldoret that my knees had a little bit of an issue there yeah. with um, arthritis. And so my dad felt, if you go to the States right now, you'll end up uh, freezing because I was yeah. going to North Carolina. So yeah, um, we decided uh, why not stay another six, six months, go in the spring. And during that period, I applied for colleges and I got into USIU. Wow. And that was it. I started. Chris, <laughs> uh, so you're Kenyan. I'm Kenyan. You're Kenyan. Yeah, yeah. I think you are more Kenyan than a lot of Kenyans, especially those that live outside of this country. Um, what, what are some of the things that you love about being Kenyan? And, sort of a, an outsider. I love the work ethic. Yeah. We're very hardworking, we're very persistent, we're very determined. And I think this is a place, Kenya is America on the African continent. Yeah. If you work hard, you can get to wherever you want to. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much, you put your, your mind on it and your focus. So I think there's a lot of opportunity and, and I love the fact that, I mean, there's always progress. I think despite everything happening around us, there's progress. Okay. And that's important. Absolutely. Looking at your story over the last couple of years, very uh, key to note that you are always reinventing. Uh, there's never a moment of plateauing in Chris and Anu's life. And you say very clearly that it's something that uh, drives you, the hunger within you drives you. Tell us a little bit about from when you are a young man and to where you are today, what has it taken to, for you to get to where you are? Well, I, first of all, I don't look at where I am as though it's, it's a destination. This yeah. is just a milestone in, in a long journey. But I think the more critical thing is, I think focusing on a few things at every stage of your life. Um, I, I did finish college in two and a half years but that was simply it's a four-year course yeah. that's simply because i was focused on the book i was a bit of a nerd people a lot of people who don't wouldn't have known me then would can't believe it but i was a total nerd when i was in school i focused on the book so i it it gained me time and but it also gained me i i mean i realized that if you put your mind to something you can do it um i did have a scholarship in usiu not because of sports yeah. actually because of uh, having a, a good gpa so if you focus on something, it, 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 it comes. Um, I think the, the journey is, reinvention is also about just having that vision and saying, I want, I want something more. I want to be more impactful. Yeah. Uh, for me, being impactful, adding value to people's life, ensuring that in any assignment I'm given, I actually try to excel or put in that extra. Um, it's, it, it, is, it, it doesn't cost much because you're already doing it, so you might as well put your whole energy and yeah. passion. I mean, I'm always passionate about things that I pick up. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, of talking specifically to millennials uh, and, and those competing in the 21st century um, and looking at where you do have to start, because there's a lot of instant gratification, there's a lot of I need to get there very quickly. Um, 
talking to young people and what it is specifically about hard work and dedication and the discipline that it takes. Talk to us specifically about that. I think there's a general sense, um, both in the business world and in the corporate world, that millennials want to microwave everything. Yeah. Um, I, I typically say the road, there's no escalator to the top. It's, it's, it's stairs, it's a ladder, and you climb it, pole pole. And I think there's just that thing of being patient mm. and being focused on a few goals. I think um, it will come. There's no need of wanting to be an instant, you know, microwaved CEO. I think <laughs> it will come. I think it, it's an issue of, at some level, at some point, you have to pay the tax. Mm. At some point, you have to put in the hard work. Yeah. Um, so it's, I think patience is what I'd tell them. Yeah. And go for, don't, don't go for money, go for passion. I've, I always say I've never really worked because everything I've done has been fun for me. Yeah. So I wake up and I'm excited to be where I am, to add value. If you go for the money at some point in time, it gets, there's no real value to it. Yeah. And then you, you kind of just live a, what I'll call a mediocre life. Yeah, <laughs> if, you wanna, if you wanna live a, uh, uh, an exciting life, then go for your passion, go for the things that you are you're excited about. Okay. Speaking, of course, about work and where you started and where you are, you know, you are a lion. Chris and I is a lion, everybody. That's not why I call you. Yeah? We're going to talk about that experience for you from your perspective, yeah. okay? And then we'll talk about the guys who are there. Um, but speaking about work and the kind of work that you've done um, over the years, tell us a little bit about your CV? So my, my CV is actually not very uh, large. It's, it's, yeah. it's actually one page. And I, I started, well, selling clothes. Let, let's yeah. start from that. I started selling clothes. Um, so when I finished uh, USIU, uh, well, as a, as a foreigner, I didn't get a job immediately. I tried to get an internship. Um, I interned at an insurance brokerage. It was the best thing ever. Three months, I was doing accounts reconciliation. And all the time when I was doing college, I thought, hey, I wanted to be uh, in the finance area. And I, after sitting two weeks behind the desk, I knew this was not cut out for me. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm supposed to be outside and not behind the desk. But I started there. Then I, I sold clothes for about six months, um, okay. clothes from West Africa. And then one of my former classmates says, hey, Chris, this, this company called Swift Global hiring salespeople. No salary, but you get commissions. I say, yeah, let me, let's do it. So I started my real career from Swift, did five years there, mm -hmm. um, started right from the bottom, two years, no salary, wow. just commissions, and I loved it. I loved every second. I'm, I'm a natural salesperson. Yeah. I even, it doesn't matter the title I have, but in core, I'm a salesperson. Yeah. Um, but um, at the end of the day, I did five years in Swift and joined uh, Jonathan and David to set up Access. Mm -hmm. So in Access, I was there for 15 years. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. But it felt like literally a year. Three different types of companies, though. Yeah. We first um, had a family-owned, quiet company, yeah. which we enjoyed. We grew. Then we took it public in 2007, run it as a public-listed uh, company for another five, six years, and then sold it off to Dimension Data and then helped to transition it for two years. Wow. So after that, I decided to look for another challenge. And there you are. And here I am. Ah, oh, fantastic. I love it. All right, more, of course, on Chris is the fact that you became part of the NTV family. We were very excited about that, yeah? So, of course, there's a lot that this man has done and it has inspired so many people, all right? So before we continue and find out how the experience was being a lion and sitting in that powerful seat, take a look. What's your story? Um, where have you come from and how did you get into entrepreneurship? I'll say I'll start, I come from hunger. That's, that's, and that's what it is. Um, and that's what my, that's my story. I mean, um, I'd say I'm a hustler. The hustle born of hunger can fill pots of opportunity. And this hunger for Chris Senanu began when he was very young selling sweets in primary school but as an enterprise he started out selling clothes in university in 1994 where he hemmed in the need for african attire to the garment of his entrepreneurial fabric and tailored together yakayeke clothes shop 
And I had a pact with my dad which said, look here, instead of you using the money you'd have used for my tuition, can you give it to me for business? I managed to convince him. So I got a little startup capital because of that. It was actually only one term's tuition. And I needed to, what I promised him is that, look, if you give me this money, I will not come back to you for pocket money. And he has since grown in business, passion and scope, putting in resource where he so promised. A lot of my background is uh, ICT and or telecommunication. And that's what a lot of people know me for. So we've got a couple of businesses, do mobile apps, web design, ICT integration. We're also in the restaurant or services business, the entertainment business, um, so music label. We also have stuff which is fashion, um, digital branding types, I mean, uh, social media, digital. Um, advertising businesses. You will sometimes find him at one of his restaurants, meeting the managers of some of his businesses, bringing feedback, ideas and direction on the table. Though he says he's not sporty, he is an outdoors guy, a 4x4 enthusiast. I'm a founder of Bundu Rovers Club. The car I drive is an um, 86 Range Rover and that's what I love because that's a real car, it's got a gear, you know, <laughs> that you stick shift. This cocktail of a profile has earned him a seat on the panel of the Lion's Den, a reality show that begins in September on NTV in collaboration with KCB Bank. What kind of a lion do you think you're going to be? I am a very quiet person. I'm an observer. But typically when I roar, I roar. This lion is ready to take risks. This lion is ready to work with entrepreneurs. This lion is interested in impact. This lion is ready to roar. See you on the lion's den. See you on the lion's den. <laughs> <laughs> the lions are coming. Dan Mwangi and TV. This is like, mm -hmm, no, Kobe. Yeah. Um, so I love that clip, but. I, I, I saw you one day uh, at, a, at a telecom event, and then after that I saw you everywhere. I don't, I don't know how that happened. I feel, you know, that you were sort of, you know, behind the scenes a lot, and then all of a sudden just thrust into the limelight. Um, tell me about that, because you became gentlemen to watch, best dressed, you know, uh, getting all these great awards and magazine covers, amazing. And then you became a lion, which we love, right? <laughs> <laughs> so tell me a little bit about that. Um, I, I think a lot of people probably typically have to choose between being career oriented yeah. and or, or doing business. And for me, years ago, um, I've always believed in SMEs. I've always believed in small entrepreneurs. Um, I think at some point I dreamt of being one myself. I don't look at myself as an entrepreneur, I look at myself always as an investor. So as I worked and earned commissions, because I'm a salesman, yeah. <laughs> I used to like to invest in small business or invest in people. And so over the years, I think I've honed skills of SME investing and um, I think that's how the whole Lions Den thing came about. Okay. It's just the excitement of um, negotiating and and buying into people's businesses mm -hmm. and having them run their own business but then helping them out because i do a lot of mentoring and yeah. coaching in terms of the uh, specifically on business yeah. i do a bit on career but mostly i'm a business i look at myself as a business coach or business strategist mm -hmm. so that's how that came about yeah um but yeah i prefer to be quiet <laughs> i know yeah i, I, I can, I can I tell you quiet. yeah you want to be behind the yeah. scenes um looking at of course uh, the mentorship angle and looking at investing a lot of uh, great ideas are coming uh, yes. to the fore from young people. Yes. Um, they're coming out smarter and more brilliant yes. every day. Um, what What are you finding in terms of your experience when it comes to mentoring young people and the kind of ideas that are floating around and, and the investment part of that? So um, I'm realizing that a lot of young people have great ideas. Yeah. Um, the only challenge they have is execution. And the execution of challenge is not about not having uh, money or access to money is actually just that focus and saying this is what I'll do first and how I'm going to take it through. Um, and so most of them, what, what they need is really a business coach, mm -hmm. someone who can hold their hand and say, look, this is how to do it. And it's good to make mistakes. Yeah. I think sometimes they're also scared of making mistakes. So there's the analysis paralysis. 
So you're thinking, thinking as opposed to uh, starting. Yeah. Sometimes it's just about starting, make the mistake, and come up, come back again and okay. try. Okay. Yeah. So that has been exciting, being a business coach to some of them. Um, the investing part is also exciting when you're doing the negotiation, yeah. but the hard work happens off camera. Yes. And that's the real work. Okay. And that's what actually grows the people and that's what's impactful. Okay. On the show, some ideas really uh, were very close to your heart. Uh, some people just came on, wow, that smile just kept showing up every week. Um, tell us a little bit about some of the ideas that you would like to invest in and, and in terms of encouraging young people of how to, how to take an idea from just, you know, an idea into bringing it to life. Well, the way to the last one, the last question is just start. Yeah. Just start. Because... Um, a lot of people have ideas and sometimes they feel, let me keep it to myself, I don't want to tell somebody. Share the idea, bounce it off with a couple of people, but start. Register the company, put your energy behind it, start. Yeah. Um, I've tried to keep away from the technology space, but I, I, it just seems to be what attracts me. Yeah. So a lot of the technology, um, mobile app and uh, web stuff companies were exciting for me on the den. Um, oh, two particular ones would be Big Brains, mm -hmm. which was a gentleman. I just love the guy. I mean, he's just really bubbly. Really, you can see this guy's a, got some integrity, very professional. He had a system for um, uh, primary school or rather school education system so that headmasters can log in, put in um, what's happening in the school, that the, the teachers can see, the, the mm -hmm. parents can see. Very good system. Yeah. So working very hard with him. And then there's a gentleman of M. Kura, especially yeah. it's election time. Yes. Who says, look, down the, the line in future, you can sit on your couch and just do your vote using your we need, smartphone. We need to get that guy, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we need to get that guy up and running exactly. ASAP. It would be wonderful, yeah? yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, those are two of the best uh, ideas that I got from the den. But then I was very passionate about the chocolate. Yes, yeah. I remember that episode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Chocolate was, was, a, was a big one. I, I didn't get to invest there, but... Uh, it was a good, it was a good um, fight. Yeah, absolutely. All <laughs> right. Fight, yeah. yeah, okay. So you're a family man. Yes. I'm seeing you on social media. Um, tell us a little bit about how you spend and how you balance everything because you seem very business oriented. But tell us about the life work balance. Well, first of all, I said there's no such thing as balance. Okay. You know, I think there's, we always think about 50 50. No, um, I think at different stages of your life, you have to prioritize different things. Um, my, 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 my kids are eight and nine. Typically weekends, I like to play chess with them. So yeah. typical Saturdays, wake up, hang out with the kids a little bit. Um, they have also a very busy social life, I must say. Okay. So if I don't get in with their program, I'm going to be out. But um, by, by evening, we'll, we'll sit down and, and, and share what, what happened in the week. Mm -hmm. Sundays, totally fully for, the, for, for, for family. Um, play chess, play a lot of board games, yeah. a lot of just sitting down, chit-chatting. Okay. Um, yeah, that Easy, works. Easy, yeah. All right, uh, we're going to take a commercial break, but before we do, I'm going to play something called Quick Fire with you. Okay. It's just I'm going to throw you some very quick questions. I'm not moving, okay? <laughs> we're just going to sit here. A lot of people expect that I'm going to stand up, we're going to make you juggle. No, very easy, okay? You ready? Ready. All right. Favorite food? Chapati. Favorite politician? Local or international? Both. Local? Hmm. <laughs> Peter <laughs> Kenneth. Oh, okay. <laughs> international? Oh, I hate to say it. Mugabe. Really? Oh, oh my God. <laughs> I thought you'd say who, Obama. Who doesn't like Mugabe quotes? <laughs> I know, it's true. <laughs> says, yeah, 22 million it. people uh, <laughs> who can exactly. vote on them. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> favorite uh, beat to dance to or song? Oh, beat, I, I like any South African Quator. Okay. I'm a Quator oh, I like person. that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, favorite pastime? Reading. 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 And chess, you've just said. Reading, chess, yeah, I'm, I'm a reader. Okay. Um, well, I, I forget, the word has just gone out of my head. Um, your, you know, the thing that you like uh, your what is the word pastime no not pastime uh so I, I didn't want to say addiction i didn't want to say hobby or addiction you know mm. the one thing like chocolate or you know the mm. one thing that you know is bad for you but what's your poison 
Wow. Thank you, Jackson, my dear director, <laughs> for that. Thank How you. Is it? Yeah. So I'm lactose intolerant, but oh. I like cheesecake. Do you? <laughs> so that'll be my That's it. You guys, have you gone to know Chris Delano? Yeah? <laughs> all right. So we have uh, an audience member who wants to ask you a question okay. before we take a break. All right. Are you all set? Can we get the microphone up down here, Benso? Yeah? I love it that we have people that we can interact with right here. Hi. How are you? Good morning. Are you having a great morning? I'm um, Okay, what's your name, sir? My name is Oguda. Okay, As Benso is giving you another microphone because that one doesn't seem to work. Okay, okay my name is Oguda, mm -hmm. a student at the University of Nairobi, journalism student at the University of Nairobi. Okay. I have three very quick questions for my brother. Feel wow. free. Three. That, yeah. <laughs> quick fire. Quick <laughs> fire. <laughs> this guy is like, Kobe, can I come up here? Yeah, go ahead. Okay, one. Well, uh, from your smiles and backgrounds, it seems things has, have been very good for you, very smooth. I walk in the park for you. Some of us are struggling to get where you are. But it's, not, <laughs> it's not easy. Has it been, has it, is it how we are seeing that it has been very easy for you all through? And then the second one is about people are struggling to go to US, especially in Kenya. They call it land of opportunities, but you are here in Kenya making it. How are you making it? And the third one and the last, What's moving you? What is okay. the, what, what's the energy that moves you to achieve this much? Thank you. Great questions, you. yeah? <laughs> I'm gonna bring you up here. And you can sit with me for the next one, yeah? I like this guy, all yeah. right. N number one, no, it's not been easy. Um, because people only see the positive or what ends up happening well. In several cases, things, throughout my career and even investing in businesses, there's a lot of, um, uh, opportunities missed or you get into um, business and it doesn't work out and even in career there's sometimes you get upset that you're expecting let's say a promotion or you're expecting a particular opportunity and it doesn't come it's not smooth the issue is not what happens to you in life the issue is how you deal with it so I smile a lot and it's not this doesn't mean um, I don't have any hardship but it's just because that's my that's my attitude towards life I just I've got to take it positively and when things happen or don't happen the way I expect them, then I learn from them. It's an opportunity to improve. It's an opportunity to do it in a different way. So that's, that's what I, I see. Um, I think just the same way they say heaven is a place on earth, the U.S. or the land of opportunity, even Kenya is a land of opportunity. Last week, it's interesting you say that because last week in, in, in church on Sunday, people were asked, what, where is it that you dreamt of going when you were a kid? Because a lot of people want to go to the U.S. And I said, Sudan. Why? Because I see a lot of opportunities. Wow. In Sudan. <laughs> so it, it, it depends. One person goes and says, ah, there, if, I, if I go to Sudan, there's nobody wearing shoes. There's no opportunity to sell shoes. Somebody says, actually, there's nobody wearing shoes. There's a lot of opportunity to sell a lot of shoes. So it depends on your outlook on life. Um, sorry, what was the third, third question? question? The third question was the energy. That the energy. You. Yeah. Ninja. Ninja. <laughs> yeah. The energy comes from being hungry. When, when you wake up in the morning, you're hungry. No one tells you to go out to look for something to put in your stomach. So it depends on the hunger you, you wake up with. You know, if you wake up with a sense of entitlement, if you wake up, I'm going to sit, the money, the food will come to me, the money will come to me, the opportunity will come to me. You're not going to be excited to go out and work hard. But if you wake up and you're, you're, you're hungry, you're hungry. I'm hungry for impact. I want to impact a lot of youth. I want to impact a lot of people positively. So I wake up and I look for opportunities for impact. I'm hungry for those opportunities. You know, I want to see myself doing things that have massive impact. So that's where the energy comes from. But <coughs> in the literal sense also, it's hunger. <laughs> when you're hungry, you go for things. Yes, you do, everybody. <laughs> Amazing. Give it up for Chris and Anu. You're very inspiring. We're going to have you back. Thank you. You're going to keep inspiring, especially young people. Thank you, Kobe. Absolutely. We wish you the very best. We hope your 2017 is better than every other year. All right? And please invite your kids here. Let's do a chess off. I, I play chess. Oh, you do? I do. I've been playing chess since I was here. But thank you. My son you. is very good. He beats me a lot. Really? Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. So, 